this is, this is, this is. Uh, welcome back, AJ Perdomo. What's up, man? Good, man. Chilling here in Richmond, Virginia, uh, hanging out, loving life, man. How you been? I've been good. I've been uh, writing. Uh, yeah. we, we've been practicing here and there. MXPX has been practicing, you know, working on new stuff, working on new songs. Um, right. That's pretty I much why I wanted to have you on. I wanted to catch up. I know the Danger Summer has been getting hot lately, about to drop oh. something. Yeah, we've been ripping, man, ripping, working hard, and yeah, I can't wait to hear what you guys are cooking up. That sounds sick. Yeah. You're lucky to have your band all in one place. Like we're all spread out, so every time we write, it's a fucking hassle, but in a good way, you know. Like I think it it creates a niceness. I think it's nice to kind of limit your time, you know. Like I don't know if your band guys ever come over and it's like, well, let's just drink and hang out, whatever, you know. <laughs> At least when we hang out, we're straight to business, you know. Yeah. We do. Our so there's a lot more of that but yeah we've been working on uh we got a new single coming out we recorded that uh a few months ago and honestly man it would have came out sooner but we had uh you know it took forever for one of the dudes to mix and we ended up going with someone else so everything all the- takes longer nowadays <laughs> oh man you know and and here's the problem is when you work with like friends that are really close it's like you know things are easier to slip you know so Sometimes you have that kind of disconnection. So, yeah, it took a little bit, and now we got the best part of letting go. I have to plug it. It's coming out October 29th. You can pre-save it, smarturl.it slash TDS2021. Go check it out. Uh, We got a little clip there, too. And, uh, yeah, did some NFTs based around it. We did a music video that kind of draws from all the same uh pieces so yeah we got a lot of moving parts with it i think uh it's gonna be a good time also gonna do a full length but we're gonna do a little bit of touring first we're finally back to the part in the world are you guys going on tour you guys have what what have you been up to with shit we haven't yet but we will next year we're kind of planning right now yeah you have it like locking down yeah okay cool we're starting yeah we're starting to do the same thing you guys we're probably a little well we're I wouldn't say behind, but uh, we haven't announced anything. So maybe we are a little behind you guys. But uh, we are planning on doing shows next year. So nice. we can talk more about that. But uh, I want to get back before we get into the touring stuff, because we can talk a lot about touring. Uh, yeah, we- I want to yeah. hear about, you know, the new song, uh, the best part of letting go. Yeah. So it's going to be part of the new album. So that this will be part of the new album. It's like your yeah, first single yeah. from the album. So, first single and i mean we haven't recorded the rest of that and we're just like let's get this song out it's an important song it felt really good so uh we had some time after writing to hop in the studio and just record it quick so laid it down it went through a million revisions and now it's finally what it become became and i'm pumped about it's kind of ballad it's sad but hopeful and loving and beautiful so i'm really excited and i'm interested to see what people say because you know how it is being in a band it's like every time you release something we're always just taking different steps we're moving in different directions i think it sounds a lot different than pretty much anything we've done so we'll see what people say there's gonna be haters but there's gonna be lovers you know (laughs) always but everything and, you know. and with a single, it's a little easier to get away with putting out something different than what you've done. You, I feel yeah. like uh, uh, nowadays, as a single, you can kind of go, maybe it's just how I feel about my band. Like, we really say yes over the summer, and it was very different from something we'd may, maybe do on an album, right? Um, yeah. Very poppy, very upbeat. But I don't know. It's like it's singles you can really push the envelope a little bit and when you come out with the album if every song on the album is like a single then i think fans start to question but yeah exactly yeah so yeah i I don't i don't think by the way you're a great songwriter i was just listening to some of your your older stuff versus your new. i'm more familiar with your new stuff like i don't know i love the new stuff (laughs) yeah but but i was checking out the old stuff it's really good too so you're a good songwriter in general it doesn't really matter you know what time of your life you're in thank you my man you did disappear i don't know why you disappeared but it doesn't really matter i i'm i still see you and i still see me so hopefully the recording's good interesting yeah who knows who knows but okay so uh man i was so nice to see your face too i'm like, where did he go man maybe i'll come back 
<laughs> yeah, maybe it's like a connect. Uh, there was this little pop up that said something's in beta. Would you like to use it? Like, I was like, what beta? <laughs> But, uh, no beta. Alpha. Alpha, right? <laughs> yeah, fuck. Okay. I actually see you when I go to settings. I can see a little square view. This, oh, you can see me a little this, bit? Okay, this good. That's what I have to do for now. You clicked something. Never click the thing. <laughs> Wait, what? Never click the thing. Speaking of technology, let's get into this. <laughs> NFTs. NFTs, yeah. like for people that don't know what NFTs are, you're releasing some NFTs as part of your single release. Yeah. What's an yeah. NFT? So an NFT, uh, the basic rundown, and yeah, it's caused a lot of confusion. Uh, NFT is a non-fungible token. So basically, uh, it is a digital footprint. It, the, the best way to kind of describe it is like, okay, imagine like uh, you had a first print of like a Van Gogh or you had a, a, the film from a picture you, you're basically buying that but in a digital form is the idea becomes you know physical isn't going to be around for too long you see things like cds disappearing and yeah vinyl is a great object it's something you can hold on whatever but people are bringing the physicality of objects for example like a babe ruth card this is the only one made but it's it's just not in a physical form. It's in a digital form. So these are moving. They uh, have the music playing with them too, and they're on the Ethereum network with or the Ethereum blockchain, which is uh, is you know a cryptocurrency. And uh, basically, when you there's an address. There's an address to these NFTs. They're they're finite. They live in a digital space that's going to live there forever. It's going to be there forever and. Uh, with the influx of, you know, Ethereum, uh, things go up and down in value. And with demand, things go up and down in value. So basically, we have these very, very limited NFTs. And uh, they're moving gifts. Uh, they all come from our music video. Uh, my buddy Patrick Lawler, shout out to Patrick Lawler, fucking genius. He's the one who uh, showed us the NFT world and was captain of the ship. And he made all these digital pictures. And he's he's finishing up our music video right now but uh all, it was all made by feeding tour video and photos into a machine learning algorithm and you basically tell the computer to recreate the vibes of the photos and the videos and it makes all this crazy fucking trippy shit so uh we have three different nfts and they're all different versions of that one is limited to one of one we have one limited to one, you know, to one of twenty. There's twenty of them, and then there's one where there's fifty, and they uh, vary. Also, they come with benefits, and so when someone buys an NFT, there's a link that pops up. It's our Dropbox link, and it has our new single. It has uh, unreleased demos, some old demos. It has alternative album artwork for the single, and. Uh, yeah, so they get that as well. They get the new song instantly. So tab perks. And then people can resell the NFTs. Like mm -hmm. out in the line, if these become very scarce and people are like, I really want the NFT, uh, they can buy it from someone. You can resell it to someone else, and then we'll get a small royalty on top of that. So, yeah, it's like this physical piece that lives in the digital world, and it can be resold as many times as it wants to. And it is the the one thing, you know, like there's a lot of in the art world, a lot of this going on, you know, top artists are releasing NFTs and mm -hmm. it's a way to kind of keep making royalties. Say your art goes up to a million dollars in value, you'll receive a royalty every time it's resold. So it helps the artists out. And um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. We also have some perks where you can get guest lists for the rest of eternity to our shows you can get uh you know everyone who buys an mt gets credit on the new album your name will be in the new album so that's just interesting yeah. a, a lot of uh i've been asked by a lot of different people over the last couple year well year i guess it would be um uh, you know do you, do you you thought about doing an nft and stuff and it's like yeah we've, we've thought about it we just haven't had a real reason to do it yet you know we didn't want to just do it to do it you know I think exactly. attaching it to an album, attaching it to something that you're going to have a bigger story around makes yeah. sense for a band like us or something. So that's really cool to hear that you're doing that. You're taking the plunge. Um, exactly. You know. Yeah. And a, a lot of people, 
are giving us shit for it. A lot of people are accepting it and buying them. So it's kind of a weird thing. Like NFT is very like when you talk to people, it's a controversial subject right now. Some people yeah. hate the of NFTs, you know, completely. <laughs> well, I think I think it's just hard for people to understand NFTs, and 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 I don't. I'm not saying I understand them completely myself. I don't have any, um, but I kind of pay attention. I read up on it a little bit, and yeah. I think the the thing that's cool about NFTs is is it could be it's going to be how we have ticketing in the future. I'm sure exactly. some sort of oh, right, you know right. better version of of what we have. I mean, they kind of do it a little bit with your cell phone. Like if you go to a, a, a foot, a pro, you know, NFL game or something like that, or an NBA game, usually your tickets nowadays are on your phone. So I think it's all headed towards the digital. Everything's in the air. Everything's in the ether, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So people are going to have to figure that out eventually, sooner or later. But back to the actual NFTs, you know, they can be anything. They can be just a digital picture. It could be like, you know, this podcast we can make into an NFT. I'm not saying anybody would buy it, but because I mean, that's the thing is scarcity. You know, there's a mil there's going to be a thousands of these podcasts, but getting that yeah. one picture, I don't know, codified, whatever they put in the, in the, the backlog of the, the data in the photo, in the digital file, that, uh -huh. that's pretty much kind of what it comes down to. And then that goes on to the blockchain, which is, another sort of mind-blowing thing i i have a little bit of bitcoin that i bought so long ago not even a little bit i have like one bitcoin but uh <laughs> yeah, that's good that's yeah hot right now yeah yeah but it's a mercedes-benz one bitcoin. it's gonna sit there until like i'm like ancient and then i'm gonna be so like, what what did you what's that how much did you buy the bitcoin for i bought into into it when it was I think I spent two hundred fifty or three hundred dollars. Holy shit, man! And I bought a little less. Than, it was like slightly oh. less than a bitcoin. But Dude, I was you're like, killing it, man! Was, bitcoin was like four hundred, or yeah. I was like, I don't know if I want to put four hundred bucks in. Ridiculous. Dude. But and especially because where you live, you're lucky to live in a place that's so technol technology based. I mean, out there. You know, West Coast, yeah. you know, digital world, they're very ahead. And they, like, everyone I talk to from over there in San Francisco, you know, out there, people, this is normal to them. You know, crypto, you know, they've been dealing with it since the beginning. You've probably seen in real life crypto ATMs before anyone, you know, like and things out in nature that are crypto based, you know. Yeah. And nowadays you can, you can just sit on your computer on the internet and find out all about it. Um, I'm yeah. not saying I know much about it. I, I've definitely known about Bitcoin and about crypto for a long time. But, you know, you see things like Ether, Ethereum. I I thought about it a dozen times going, I should probably get some. Yeah. And I just never did. Yeah. I should probably get some. And I still don't. I still don't have any. But yeah. for things like the NFTs, it's a great idea to have because then you can just, okay, you just have your, your Ethereum wallet and you can just digitally... <laughs> throw throw whatever it is that you need and you buy it um yeah it's not real to me yet you know even though it's like technically worth this much like a bitcoin or an ethereum it's hard yeah just like money honestly to to me aj money isn't even real to me <laughs> i know yeah yeah it's hard to even put value in my and i totally understand that and yeah so basically yeah with the ethereum network uh it, it's very interesting right now because and it's going to get easier, but right now there's even like gas fees, and mm -hmm. that becomes a big thing. When you buy, we did two versions of NFTs. We did one using Ethereum and then one using Polygon. The Ethereum network, you know, it uses electricity. People are mining this. People are mining this. It's uh, it uses so much power where you literally have to pay the gas fees for a transaction. Like if you buy our higher up NFTs, you do have to pay a gas fee, which at the beginning of the day, it could be like you know sixty bucks, or it could be like four hundred dollars that is tacked on to every transaction. So hopefully, when they get uh, you know a more greener solution, they're gonna kind of I don't know the technicalities of it, but when Ethereum 2.0 comes, it's not gonna use all that energy, and gas fees will drastically reduce. But it it is a crazy world. I mean, you you think about uh, 
Yeah, like gold. I mean, this is basically like, you know, the mining of gold, but digitally. Like this is, you know, you're you're making a currency and with gold, you're always finding more gold, but to a certain percentage, you know, the value of the dollar is always changing. So it's kind of insane. And and I think what a lot of people love about crypto and Bitcoin and it's kind of, you know, decentralized. A lot of people use it for, you know, bad things, you know. A lot of people use it for good things. You know, it's uh, you know, it's unregulated right now. It's the Wild West, you know. <laughs> to those that would argue that, though, I've heard recently uh, that actually it's a very small percentage of, of criminal activity that uses Bitcoin and uses crypto. And most yeah. of the fraud that's happening, like 98% of the fraud that's happening is going through regular fiat banks. Yeah, like exactly. Centralized banks. Just yeah, because that's you money. You're you're plugged in already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's good to hear. Because so, yeah, yeah, people will just complain about it. People complain. They say, yeah, it's for bad. It's for this, etc. But it's just kind of like it was hard to understand the internet when it first came out, and you know, people are now starting to use this. It's gonna, you know, fully realize into different stages, and we just want to be in there for the beginning. We want to, you know, release some NFTs and. Uh, I think uh, this is a really cool thing. You know, I, I was excited to be a part because, as you say, you know, people kept saying to us, "Oh, you should release an NFT. You should release an NFT." And I didn't know much about it. And like I said, my friend Pat, he came on and he's fully in that world. He sells his own art on there, and uh, he buys art as well. And uh, in a way, it's kind of like. It, when you when you get into the higher end NFTs, I mean, people. If you go to the front page of OpenSea.io, I mean, people are buying like a picture of a monkey. You know, it looks badass as fuck, but it's like you know sixteen thousand dollars. And it and to a lot of people, like people that have a lot of money, this is like wearing a Rolex. That you know, they go online. Hey, on my page, I've got this. And people are like, holy shit, you have that NFT. You know, so to a lot of people, it's kind of like. Uh, hey, I love this art, and I bought the best thing I can from it, or I bought the coveted piece. Like, I love this piece of art. So there's sense. a lot of people kind of show it off, and you know, the, the, there's like digital picture frames. Yeah, My friend, well, let Artie, me ask you, can you display it on your? Where do you display it on your website, or is it on their their profile for crypto? What what's yeah, so basically there's there's a lot of different places. So OpenSea is a place where it's on your profile and whatnot. And you have my an account there and then... Yeah, you have an account there and, you know, there's all your NFTs. Even the Danger Summer, if you go to our page, we own uh, one of Pat Lawler's NFTs. We bought it originally. And uh, my friend actually just went to a party in the Hamptons and this motherfucking rich guy, I mean, millionaire has a giant picture frame and it has this NFT that's worth like half a million dollars and it's displayed on a digital screen that looks like a picture frame and he has it sitting there. Oh, and so yeah. kind of, you kind of like look at this world that's happening right now. And, you know, if someone says, hey, that I don't think that's a real NFT. How, how could that be that you have on your wall? You're probably just, you know, showing the TV screen. He has the address to his wallet that is connected to it so everyone can see who owns the one of one and people are going to be hitting up that person being like yo when are you going to sell this I'll, I'll buy it for this much people make an offer all the time it's kind of a very trackable art system you know as opposed to you know like a banksy goes up for auction at uh whatever those big art houses is and who knows where it goes it could disappear no one sees it for 40 50 years you know it's very trackable yeah. you know and see where it goes. You can see where the art is. So. The tax, I wonder, taxable too. I mean, there's there's always been that thing where these billionaires keep um, these these storage storage areas in I don't know friendly countries where you know tax haven countries. So yeah. they have like this like international locker of all these art paintings. Do, 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 yeah. do, do, do. And they're just in there, and so they just own these assets possibly to sell off at later times, but they don't want to bring them into the country because they'll have to pay millions of dollars in taxes. It's been like yeah. plots of movies, I'm sure. But uh, I wonder how they tax this. And I think maybe that's one of the great things is that you know they haven't figured out how to tax this. It's a very complicated situation going on. You know, like how, how do you follow the money? I mean, there's billions of transactions going on non-stop so it is hard to say yeah and how are they going to track well, it how are they going to make it happen bit, china ha actually uh, has announced sure. 
their been, China hack actually uh, has announced sure. their own coin, and it's a centralized coin. And, and I'm and I'm sure other countries are going to follow suit. Possibly, I don't know if America will do that, but uh, probably a Russia or somebody you know will will have yeah. their own crypto coin. But it's centralized. That's the problem. Is is yeah. you can't pass a centralized dollar yeah. uh, anonymously. You like you can a, a paper dollar, a U.S. dollar paper. You can give it to somebody and be like, no one will ever know as long as you're not in front of a camera. I guess. But <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to do that. Yeah. And 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 these governments are going. Yeah. How can we? control the people even more how can we you know see everything and, and they're just using technology just as criminals yeah. use technology all the time as well uh gov governments are their own type of criminal in my opinion not not everybody but but yeah yeah I mean, who oh. needs to be in everybody's business but these centralized coins beware so i think the great thing about crypto and about nfts is it's decentralized it's peer-to-peer -peer. it could be there's no central exactly bank. yeah yeah yeah, I love that. And that, and that's the thing is, yeah, it is it is scary a world where, yeah, the government knows all your transactions. Like, you know, they send you a tax bill at the end of the year. Yeah, we already a, know. We I know. know. You know, at the end of the year. We already know. We know. You know, it's like so somebody can fact check me yeah. on it. But I heard that there's a possible bill yeah, uh, yeah. that they want to, you know how if you deposit $10,000 in your bank, the bank has to inform the IRS. Well, now this new law could make it the threshold yeah, is six hundred dollars. Yeah. So every time you deposit six hundred dollars or more, the IRS knows about oh. it, which obviously cuts down on tax fraud and things like that. But that's just that's rough, uh, and then that's just squeeze that. Yeah, that's yeah, that, in the news that on uh, people uh, quite a bit. Actually, in a, in a band, you know, we're in a band. It's like there's so many cash transactions. You know, it's like. Hey, we just we just throw cash to our homeboy. You allegedly, know, like, allegedly. There's a lot of under the table going on, you know. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I mean, back in the day, of course. I mean, so, as the years some, have gone on, it, it's gotten much, much more. Just you know, this is how we have to run our business because it's too big. But, but yeah, I mean, I yeah. just I come from that old school mentality of wanting to live free, loose, and just run run crazy run wild yeah Dude, run wild you man we can which you uh with the uh, second hand serenade and you you're, you're doing your coming up yeah yeah, yeah. Or starting on starting uh that's kind of no smart, we're just man. doing that like, because kind of it's kind of like uh you know they were like hey will you come out like it's okay if you come out acoustic we're like ooh, acoustic we could do this like super chill super easy and not okay. really affect our headlining numbers next year because that's the thing we had the type of thing where Yo, we hit over booking it. We want a tour fall. Like everyone's starting a tour, and they're like, "Man, it's gonna be hard to book a tour. Like shit's filling up. You know, like everyone kind of bottlenecked in. Heavy traffic is start. Things starting to open up, and I don't know if the dangerous summer's top on these promoters' list. Like it, it's hard to fucking get the hold. So yeah, we got offered that so that we can push our full band headliner to early next year. And, uh, you know, we kind of preserve that piece of ourselves. So it was a really good situation that worked really well. And uh, I'm excited, like man. I've Fucking secondhand the name, serenade. They, I don't think I've they, ever, I mean, maybe I've heard the songs. Yeah. He had like a radio song, like back in like probably 2007, 2008, and they fucking blew the fuck up from it. And then uh, I think they broke up, you know, here and there somewhere. So it's kind of uh, coming back and doing shows thing. So, um, yeah, they're good. They're kind of acoustic piano-y, like, almost like dashboard confessional-like, but with more piano and stuff like that. Emotional, emotional, chill music. So, yeah, we're going to open up for them. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun to get back out there. You know, just as much as I do, like, wh what the fuck do you do when, you know, you tour your whole life, you're running, you're running. And then it just stops for like, I mean, now almost two years. Like, we're going to be touring. Two years ago, December was our last tour in, you know, Japan, Australia, all those countries. And we're coming back, man. We, we get to see the people. We get to feel the people. We get to uh, experience that yeah. again. Last man. time we it's talked, like, thank God. There was nowhere yeah. inside. It was, it was, we talked about the fact that you had just had nope. to like leave right. tour and like, man, what do we do now, you know? But uh, it seems like you guys have been busy and 
working on all the new stuff and then now you got this this tour it's a good idea you know do acoustic keep it simple get out there play see the world um you're not only doing the u.s next year you're doing a leg of the european uk is it as well or oh yeah yeah uk europe we're going out there uh and that'll be fun and hopefully we have our album done and it might come out during that tour so that's the plan we'll see what happens it's kind of like i don't know if you i don't know if you guys are working on anything right now about releasing but oh, yeah. vinyl times are fucking insane so i'm of the mindset like you know what, like and taylor swift does this too pre-order the album it comes out you know next month the vinyl is going to take four to five months that's just <laughs> that's just what it what happens order it pre-order right now it's going to take time and uh, I just, you know, with the digital age especially, I just want to get the album out. I want to finish it next, I want to finish it in January, yeah. release it in February. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. Uh, just kind of keep going, keep rolling stuff out. And, uh, it, you know, as we talked about before, it's just this, this Spotify machine, this giant engine that keeps on turning, the wheels keep on turning. He's got to feed this machine. Feed the music is like oil to this machine and it just keeps revving up and revving up so we're just doing our best as we can to you know write incredible tracks and get them out there to the people i think uh one of the biggest things about leaving labels is fuck your like you know scheduled timeline like we need the album by this date so that it can go out this date it's like we're at the point in our lives where i can make an album right now and in one week you could have it in your hands like and we want it to feel like that we want it to feel tangible uh we really tried to do an album a year we we released our last album last december but it's gonna go past a year by a little bit you know just because we just keep trying to write trying to write and until the songs are yeah, there it's exactly, not gonna that's be exactly done you know right <laughs> just, i've been writing and writing and just kind of working on stuff and trying to find the find the right songs for the record and and we're practicing now and then sometimes Tom has to leave and he comes back so like you know it's getting there but um so do, I think so. You know what your album's gonna feel yeah. like? Do you can you? Yeah, you can we definitely. The new, we're that you can, far. You can yeah. feel it. It's it's like a couple like a couple songs yeah. and and the songs themselves that are already there still need work. We haven't really worked on them but. It's kind of just like our schedule is all yeah. right, and then we'll like I'll bring it into the guys, and we'll we'll figure it out that day, and it takes you know an hour or two hours maybe yeah. at the most two hours, but um, and then we have a demo, and then we're done, and then we okay. like kind of usually let it go for a while, and then we come back to it if it's gonna make. But there's been rec you know a couple songs where we like gone through it. It's like it's a good song, but it's not the sound of this record, so we probably won't work on it again. But um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that happens now and again. But for, okay, for cool. And then where, where do those yeah, songs yeah, go? Do you I release so. them if one day? It, do they? Do I they... think if they make it to the MXPX practice, they're a good enough song to be either rewritten a little bit, or you know, there's this one song I have that I, I really like. Yeah. And I think could actually make the record, but the lyrics on the chorus are way too, well, let's just say cheesy. It's just way too cheesy. And but the rest of the the lyrics are are great. And yeah, they have a good, strong, positive emotion to them. And so I'm like, okay, okay, I can just like write. My plan is to I just rewrite that chorus. You know, just not even the music of the chorus or the melody, just literally yeah. the lyrics. So like things like that, um, yeah. things like that we work on quite a bit, or I'll work on during the week. You know, before practice or whatever, and then we do practice. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you mm -hmm. your time by yourself writing it. And that's the hardest part, man. Lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. I mean, we have like yeah, like 20 songs that just don't have lyrics. And then we have some that do have some lyrics. You know, it's like just finding the words. I mean, it, you know, like people don't understand the pressure, man, the pressure. Being the singer, being the, the one that says everything. And, you know, it's your story. It's my story. Like we have to really tell our own tales. And, you know, like I think – COVID really fucked me up in the head, especially like when I got COVID. So? I don't know, man. It it fucked me up in the head, and like I I started like kind of losing a lot of confidence. Like you know, like you go through your your 
lot of doubts, a lot of like, you know, I'm searching for the lyrics, you know, like I, I just feel like I need tour again. I need these things in my life that build me up and that, uh, shoot me out in the world and really just fill up my well as a songwriter. Like I feel like sitting at home, it's, it's hard to write music just I know. living in you your home for two on, years. Like, social you know, it's media like, is like a I'm, different aspect of the same problem. Is like, what do you post? Like, I'm not going to sit here and post <laughs> live sh- shows when I'm not playing live. It's ridiculous. So yeah, it's the same thing yeah, as exactly. what you write yeah. about when nothing's happened or has nothing yeah. happened. I don't know, but I'm breaking things. Exactly. You know, and, and it's it, it's kind of mind mind boggling. But yeah, we're gonna uh, fucking go out on tour, and and that's why we scheduled. The record for after this we got you know 31 days in the studio it's a brand new studio uh we're recording with will beasley he uh he did our ep recorded our ep and now he's got like this giant beautiful like kind of multi-million dollar studio that he had an investor come in and uh throw some money at so it's going to be a beautiful studio and uh yeah, it's, I'm fucking pumped, man. And and I'm that's the thing is like album mode. We're the type of band we go into the studio and we you know sleep on the couch in front of the console yeah. and we walk out 31 days later. Like we live the journey of the album. We like live and breathe it, and we die for it. We kill ourselves in there, and then we come out the other end. And I think our EP kind of missed a little bit of that because. We were writing it across the country and sending stuff across the country. I need to be in the room, you know, bleeding it out with yeah. with the boys and making it happen. So, I th- it's gonna be nice to go back into a studio and fully do it and not have these restrictions that COVID put on us. And uh, yeah, do a lot of drugs. I do yeah, a lot of drugs. Happen, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, you, you know, about songwriting and and something that I've been doing with the lyrics is it takes all the pressure off. If you, if you just write whatever comes to mind, even if it's bad, I'll write that. Like I said, with the chorus, it's super cheesy. Yeah. It got the song written, but now I can come back and I just have that one thing to rewrite. And it's a lot less than like writing a full song. Right. Um, that's helped me a lot and it keeps the pressure off. Like you don't care. Like I'll just rewrite it. No big deal. Yeah. I love that. That is awesome. Yeah, sometimes I'll like spit like, you know, like mumble words and like try to spit my way through it, do stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, I really should. I'm always just worried, it, you know, like last minute it's uh, going to like, yeah. let's just fucking <laughs> use the words. You know, like I'm scared well, that everything I say will just, yes. you know, demo it. You listen to demo enough times, you're like, really good. I actually love this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm scared of like. Okay, it, well, you know? yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that, that can well, be a thing. I don't have to no, write because I, that, my business that's partner beautiful. Tom I th- will I th- tell me this is terrible. This is terrible. Uh, that's terrible. Uh, you should probably fix that thing yeah. that you love. And I'm just like, okay, all right. Yeah. It's good you can handle that though, because like I remember, like even you know, like when we were on a label, they're like, "Hey, you should try to write a song like this," and I was like, "Well, <laughs> yeah. fuck you. I'm gonna write the opposite." Of it. you know like it's just like when people tell me shit like that that's i'm true. like you don't fucking know like because again like being a being a your assistant being a musician we're telling our own story we're fulfilling our own prophecy it has nothing to do with anyone else it doesn't matter if people like it. like we're not writing music yeah. so that people like it like i hate to say it like we're not i'm not thinking of my fans like i'm sorry fans but i'm not like i'm gonna write a song they'll like like i'm fulfilling my own artistic integrity no one said to van gogh like yo you should like paint a picture of this you know it's like yo van gogh's van gogh let him do his crazy shit you may not understand every fucking painting he makes but you will appreciate it yeah, you appreciate it as the great art that it is uh, so uh let's talk about this <laughs> also the crazy thing about van gogh not to bring up you know the relation but i mean he didn't sell like a single painting his whole life or something like that like or he didn't sell for any amount of money like he got right. huge Andy after his death post sure. post death so- or is that somebody else right. oh, cool. <laughs> you don't want them no we could only hope he has from that well they, they're getting like <laughs> sores and stuff anyway um yeah van gogh but yeah i mean songwriting is it, yeah it, it's, it's i say that 
but I'm still writing a ton of songs that that are just fine as they are, you know. So there's plenty of lyrics that I, that I'll write and and are good yeah. to go. But but I do know what you're talking about like uh, I do like the song shop thing where uh, you know people come to me I write write a song and man and and also when I go out and I write for other artists and stuff it is so easy to write for other people and sometimes I write really great stuff but because I'm not telling my story I'm not staying true to like you know like my accountability in my life like I feel like with the dangerous summer I'm so particular about everything it has to align perfectly with how I feel in my life or something that happened mm -hmm. so it's hard for me I don't really write fiction I don't really, like you know do anything like that but when I write for other people it's like I have this no pressure freedom and sometimes I write just incredible songs that end up being something you know but I just think it it still does couldn't be a dangerous summer song because I think people see through uh, like bullshit, you know, and when it's not real and it's not you, like I think people have an intuition where they can kind of feel it. They feel, oh, he's he's like right. just no, kind of that, saying that's shit, true. you know. Because I, I feel, <laughs> I feel like I've heard so many of those songs <clears throat> over the years, and they just keep coming out. It's just it's just BS lyrics, yeah. lyrics that are like kind of sound cool together, or or no. have like something catchy about them and that's why they're in there and that's the only reason they don't actually they're kind of gibberish -y. yeah and so i, I like your lyrics because it tells a story yeah. it's, it's like okay this guy's going through it right now all right all right and people can relate to that it's it's real it, it it's great so yeah thank you, man i heard a thing actually the other day on howard stern he was talking about how uh I forget who was the artist that said it, but, you know, like, when you write lyrics and when you sing them, you're supposed to kind of, you know, mumble the words and stuff. And, you know, some great artists, it's like, you can't even tell what they're saying. And that's kind of the best it, part yeah. about it, you know? Like, it makes me want, makes me want to kind of try that, make, like, a really shitty, announced, like, fucking song where it's like, you almost don't think about the lyrics. You almost, like, you know, just ride that wave of what yeah. is going on and is kind of an feel it you thing, know or is that because Eng the english are so, like, so proper but yet their accent you can can't understand it so maybe that's part part of the problem yeah and like nirvana i mean think about like what the hell is these, you have to look up the lyrics sense. every time like <laughs> what is yeah i <laughs> know but it's like you know there's still kind of a greatness yeah. of like i don't know what he's saying but i feel it all that shit, you know, like yeah, no, fucking that, badass, you know. Even though you didn't know what he was talking about, you kind of did because you, you could you could get it from the chorus, you know, whether it's lithium or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Kurt Cobain, yeah, from, and from uh, Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually I got a, a tattoo the other day, and the, my tattoo artist was like, "Yeah, I'm going on a road trip with my friend to visit." the graves of, you know, famous tattoo people that we really, you know, love and Whoa. just kind of channel their energy. And I was like, holy shit, man, like that, like that, that almost puts like a good purpose to the concept and like kind of just like, you know, paying homage and, you know, feeling the energy, try to, you know, like hang on to something there. This well, is some I mean, type of beauty there, you know, buildings and places have energy. I don't know what it is, you know, but it, people come in. And they'll be like, oh, I feel, I feel something here or whatever, you know, in the studio. Because it actually has had some, like, haunting yeah, kind of things yeah. that have happened. But, like, for me, I've been here so long and nothing's happened in a long time to me. I'm not paying attention. Oh, wait. What's that? You're in a haunted studio. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're in a haunted studio. You guys Get the fuck here. out of here. What happened pay, there? Pay for an engineer or just do it yourself. Dude, I would there, love but. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything's just constantly changing. I know, man. It, it's fucking insane. It's funny because like we did these NFTs and we did another thing. We just we just actually announced that we're doing a VIP. Since we're not headlining, our VIP is like uh, the Dangerous Summer Drinkers Club. Six fans every show. You know, you pay fifty bucks. You get a silk screen poster. You get to hang with us for an hour at a local bar. First drinks on us. Like that's the way we're doing our VIP for this tour. Like, because it's like, hey, you know, like at least we can go meet our fans, make a little bit of money, and we have like a one-on-one -on -one interaction. And you know, there's always that fan that's like, oh, so you have to pay to hang out with your favorite bands now. And I'm like, 
<laughs> okay, well, like, I'm sorry that when, when artists start to ask for money, that's when, you know, people are like, yo, that's fucked up. And it's like, if you knew, you know, like how much in other places of our revenue stream, like music, how much has been cut down and chopped into little pieces you you would understand that we got to make money you know like if you want to see us again if you want to have an awesome album if you want to have all this like you know like find ways to support your artists like it's weird people get mad at you for being a business and trying to make money and we're just trying to find little ways creative ways to do it and with the nfts people are like oh man they're just like you know, trying to just make a quick buck. It's like, dude, we're just trying to do something new and try something and try something that, that is technologically happening right now. And, you know, it's, it's funny when you just tell people, hey, here's a way you can support me. And, like, people almost get mad at that. Like, like as if you're trying to rip them off, you know. It's like, it's like, yeah, you guys went to Napster and then you went to Kazaa. And then now we're stuck in a Spotify world. They made an agreement. Musicians, you can have your free music. You can listen to it all for nine ninety nine a month. Like, you have it. So yeah. just be happy. Let's well, have a good relationship, like <laughs> you know. Like, I kind of did something kind of insane. like before in <laughs> Europe. Not as... It, w it wasn't as fleshed out as what you're doing, but I would basically, we just, one or two people could yeah. hang out with me. I was opening for Zebrahead. Uh, yeah. And we would just hang, go to a bar, you know, and have a drink and what's up. And sometimes it was at the venue or whatever, but like, I love what you're doing and times have changed. I mean, your time is valuable. Your time and yeah. just being around you is, it's, especially now with COVID, it's like, most artists aren't going to even be around anybody. Yeah. Like, no, nothing unless they're doing a sanctioned meet and greet or something. But um, don't listen to exactly. people. Exactly. Fuck, fuck those people. I know. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the moral but, of the but, story. But seriously, um. though, if, it's not like you're <laughs> on the, walking down the street and somebody's like, hey, what's up? And you're like, give me a dollar and I'll say what's up. You know what I mean? That's, that's not what you're doing. You're going, hey, if you want to come here for yeah. this event... We will buy you a beer. You will get to hang out with us, ask us questions. You know, all, that's very worth. Yeah. Exactly. To me, it, it makes a lot of sense. And I'm from the old yeah. school punk where I never wanted to sell out. And it makes sense to, if you want to hang out with somebody, pay for it. You know, and if you get lucky and you see them on the street, cool. You yeah. You have to pay for it. But that's, that's not the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, and that's what I told, you know, like I responded, like, hey, man, I'll love, but. You know, some people want to pay for this opportunity where for an hour I'll sit with you. Like, I don't have time. I'm at the merch show. Yeah, we're even going to be like selling our own merch on the store. We'll be around. But I don't have time to sit down. You know, a lot of time here to hang out and whatever. So it's just, you know, you know, everything on the internet, there's someone or there's something where, fuck you. You know, like someone's just like, on there you know it's always some dude with sunglasses on you know like fucking you can't really see his face you know some like i don't know it's always the same thing you know but you know people just hate and they will hate and they'll continue to hate and i love those are fans. i love are deeply fans. I mean, <laughs> yeah people that that are wanting to come see the dangerous summer they're not going to blink an eye about going to hang out at a bar yeah yeah okay i'm in I'm down. I know, man. I, I'm pumped. I, I like the VIPs. I like the meet and greets. I like uh, I like the connections. Like you make these friends that, you know, you just you just know them next time. You hang out with them next time, and you, you just meet these people that. I think that's one of the best things about touring that I miss. It's just you never know what's gonna happen that night. You know, you go have a drink with some some dude. All of a sudden, like, you live this crazy night out. You go to, like, some crazy place. You take some wild drug. Whatever happens. And it's just, like, the stories of what we go through and what happens. It's it's just, uh, I love the choose-your-own-adventure about touring. Yeah. You never know what the fuck's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, Fucking it's beautiful, man. Well, dude, thank you so much for your time. I've, I've taken up a lot um, of it, but... Uh... Dude, I like it, man. This is fun. This is great, and uh, I appreciate you taking time. As, as I always say, I love, I love you. I love your band. I'm glad we became friends, and uh, we have such fun talks, such uh, introspective, fun talks. Uh, let's do it again soon, man. And, and yo, when I'm in Seattle, I'll hit you up and see if you're yeah, around. But no pressure. Say what's up. You know, grab a drink. Would love it. 
Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, so I love my man. Are great. Uh, Dude. Eventually, we'll, we'll hit the stage together. We'll do something together. We'll get the dangerous summer in. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this will come out Monday, and yeah. uh, I'll, I'll send you the link. All right. Appreciate it.